everybody. We're going to be stick welding with the Horny Easy Weld 100 ST. This is a stick take machine. It is a 120 volt machine, once again with a 15 to 20 amp breaker. You'll be perfectly fine welding. This machine is 90 amps. Make sure on the front of your machine here that you are set to stick and not TIG. We're going to have our electrode positive and our ground to the negative terminal and our ground clamp is right here. Today I'm going to be using a 8 inch 7014 rod. This is basically a beginner rod. Uh, it actually runs really, really smooth. It's really quiet. It has a nice arc and you can make contact with this rod all the way uh, to the material while you're welding. Not a lot of people know about this rod or use it. But honestly, ever since I learned about 7014, I have basically switched over every kind of welding that I'm doing and using a 7014 rod. Whether that be fences or anything, just small things that I need fixed around the house. Right now we're going to weld a 3 16th plate to a 10 gauge material. So we're going to just do a fitment that is a T weld and then we're just going to put a small fillet weld over here in that joint. So here we have our electrode holder. Uh, inside of this jaw there is different grooves in there so you can have your stick electrode positioned however you want so that it's most comfortable for you. There is an X in here. Typically that's what I'm going to be using just because by the time I have myself in the correct position that I like, in the comfortable position, then I'm at a real good angle and the, the rod will run really nicely. So first I'm just going to tack this up. hold this rod with my hand. It does get hot though, so just keep that in mind when you're welding that if you're going to start off with your hand on here, that's fine, but you will have to end up moving your hand back either down by your side or to help leverage yourself. Uh, another thing to remember, it gets a little hard to keep this rod in contact if you're not used to stick welding because this rod's actually consuming itself, so as you're welding it is shrinking, so you just have to keep moving closer and closer to this material. I'm going to be welding on this side of the plate just so that it's a little easier to see. Typically you would be here on this side and you would just be welding from left to right. So just so that you guys know you don't have to weld like this. It is a little bit more difficult. Uh, our machine here is set at 90 amps and like I said this is an 8 inch rod. So this is the thickest material rod that we do have um, rated for this machine. All right. Clean it up with this brush. 
And then you have a real nice weld right on your material. Um, one thing to remember is that if you are going to be welding right next to this weld or you're going to be adding on to this weld, you want to make sure that it's real clean and that you've removed all the slag. If you try to weld back over that slag, it does pull a little bit of it out, but you can get contamination and if you're doing anything critical, uh, you can cause cracking in your welds if you don't try to clean that up real nice. Uh, for this machine, being as small as it is, and welding on these two different thicknesses and materials, uh, that's actually a really good tie into this weld. It lays in there real flat and nice. So that's what it looks like with the correct settings. Um, but if we were to turn these settings down and say that we had a real cold start, let's go to about eh, 50 amps. So we'll head there and then we will just do another weld right here next to this one just so that we can kind of show you what it will look like if you're just not hot enough with your settings. Guys. quite a bit. That's what happens with that reduce of amperage. It's just not hot enough to actually get that started. This machine does have a built-in hot start, so it does boost you up in your amperage when you first make that initial arc, but it still just wasn't enough. Um, once you saw that I finally got it going, uh, this machine does kind of correct itself a lot, so it did end up actually flowing. Not too bad, but once we remove this slag, you'll see that this slag is a lot harder to remove. So not only is it a lot harder to remove that slag, then you have all kinds of inclusions, um, which is basically contaminating that weld. It also looks like you just have a lot of little spots and then there's lots of grooves in there that are trapping that slag. So that's what it looks like when you don't have the proper setting.